right, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Avni Baldani, and I'll be talking to you tonight about monsters. Okay, monsters, so uh, not quite. Ah, there we go. So, this monster, not quite. Think maybe smaller. Smarter? Yes, okay, smaller and smarter, almost, almost. We got the smart right. Now we need to go just a little bit smaller. And, what? There we go. There we go, now we're small enough and smart enough. So this guy is Takoplasma Gandhi, and we'll be talking about him and his little friends, brain monsters. So, Toxo Gandhi is famously known as the microbe. This is actually a eukaryote, so it's related to those little dinoflagellates that you see when you have bioluminescence. Um, that is famous for getting rodents to get attracted to cat urine. Um, they do this by modifying something in the rodent's amygdala, so it's the rat amygdala. They actually change how the genes are expressed in the neurons. So they're going in there and hacking how you're reading these neuronal genes so that instead of fight or flight, which is what the amygdala controls, they're like, no, oh yeah, we like cat urine. <laughs> cat urine's good stuff. Um, even though it needs to be in the cat to complete its life cycle, Toxo does have a significant effect on humans. So you've heard of the crazy cat lady syndrome. Um, there was an idea that was linked to schizophrenia. This has since been disproven. But it is linked to making women actually more social and more kind. Um, it's a different thing for men, which I'll tell you in a second. It's kind of exciting. Um, <laughs> it's also shown to modify neuronal pathways, so these synapses. Um, so this is a picture of a connectome of a brain. So this is how all of the neurons of the brain might be connected together. So there are about 86 billion neurons in the brain, so think like 10 to the 12 connections. So there are a lot of different places where decisions are made, and any little snip in this can change how we model a part of reality. And why am I talking about these sort of models as if they're computational? Uh, this is just a little aside, I couldn't help myself. Uh, so. Um, that uh, image on the right is actually based on a part of the brain. Um, so it's based on the carabellum, but it's actually artificial. So it was created by this guy named uh, Walter Pitts. He wrote this amazingly brilliant paper um, called The Logical Calculus um, on the ideas imminent in neural activity. And everybody should read this paper. It's so, so good. But <laughs> uh, he decided that you could understand how the brain made decisions and moreover, you can model this mathematically. This guy named Juan Neumann listened to him at MIT. He's like, yeah, that's not, that's not a bad idea. And he took a similar structure as the Purkinje cells that go up and down in the brain and connect to a unified data bus to create something called a Juan Neumann architecture, which the computer people in the room will recognize as the foundation of all modern computing with a little star next to it, because quantum doesn't quite follow that. But we don't want to talk about that here, because I don't have anywhere near that much time. <laughs> all right. Pitts is awesome. He drank himself to death at the age of 46, otherwise the world would have been a very different place. <laughs> Just a quick illustration. Um, this is something that shows that a small change in a neural network, so these neural networks actually exist in the brain also. It's the same sort of thing as you see on the computer neural network, it's a neural neural network. Um, one small change that Toxo does can make a huge impact in how you see the world. Um, so one more fun fact about Toxo before I move on. Um, in nine, er, 2013, pardon me, they did a study on male students. So I said it made women more kind, right? It made male students more attracted to cat urine. <laughs> so guys, if you want to be sexually attracted to cat urine, get yourself some Toxo. All right, moving on to our next monster. Uh, so this is a Pheocordyceps, uh, unilateralis or senescus. Those are the two main species that you come across. Um, this is known as the zombie ant fungus. So, yeah, right, zombies. Uh, so for those of you who um, haven't heard of it, it uh, gets into an ant, and it causes that ant to go down. So it's usually a tropical ant. It's usually in some big tree. It'll go down to some more humid area, about 10 inches from the ground in a tropical forest, and walk there, grab onto a branch, and die horribly. Now, 
As you can see, what happens after the ant dies, I'll tell you a little bit about how this can be even more horrifying. So we thought that it went into an ant's brain. It doesn't. So how this monster attacks you is it actually gets into your central nervous system. By which you mean like it's in your arms, it's in your legs. It's causing the ant to move while its brain is untouched and it is conscious. And so it is walking itself down there. You're welcome. <laughs> while still alive. And depending on how much consciousness you think ants have, knowing it's doomed. Are we done? Are we done sporing? Yeah, we're done sporing. Great. All right, which brings us to the last microbe I want to talk about. And this is something that we've all heard of. This is rabies. This is rabies lysovirus, which literally translates in the Latin and Greek to rage, rage virus. <laughs> so it's descriptive, right? Um, so we know rabies is something that makes you froth at the mouth. It makes you angry. It makes you rage. It makes you unhuman. Um, this has been known for thousands of years. In uh, 2000 BC, actually, the first recorded joke is about rabies. I don't have time to tell it here, but find me afterwards. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first medical description of it actually comes from um, an Indian priest named Sushra. And in his um, long work called Sushrit Samap, he spends a thousand pages, or a thousand words, pardon me, talking about how rabies is the fear of water. So before we had modern diagnostics techniques like Negri bodies, you saw fear of water and fear of air as the primary diagnostic criteria of rabies. And by that time, you're dead, right? If you get to the stage where you have fear of water, you are going to die. It is going to be quick and it's going to be messy. Fun fact about the Samatha, by the way, 600 BC, um, he detailed surgery instructions for nose jobs in C-sections. And this is, in fact, the surgical manual that was used all throughout um, both Asia and some parts of Europe. Now, rabies, right, it kills you. It's scary. And over centuries, people have been terrified of bats and of rabid dogs and have tried to cure it in any way possible. Uh, I think the funniest one is Pliny the Elder who says to insert in the wound ashes of hairs from the tail of the dog that inflicted the bite. Yes. <laughs> Bad science. So this is, in fact, where the idea of hair of the dog comes from originally. Um, yeah, right? It is. Um, it worked about as well as it works for hangovers, so dog hair doesn't cure a whole lot, it turns out. Um, but it was one of the more rational rabies cures out there. Other things included taking a severed head, powdering it, and rubbing that on the wound. That didn't work. Um, you could take something called a Hubert's key, which was literally an iron key, make it white hot, and put it both on the dog and on the person. Also didn't work. They tried waterboarding people, because if they're afraid of water, maybe water will fix it. You kind of see where they're going there. Didn't work. Um, they boiled them in oil. There were tiny, many bad ideas for how to cure rabies. One of the more well-attested um, descriptions of how rabies affects people is in the Duke of Richmond, where first he noticed that he was afraid of his wine. And you know, when a gentleman can't drink his claret, you know something has gone horribly wrong. So he realized he was going to die. Um, he then had illusions of mice running across his bed. He was worried that bells were ringing and he didn't know where they were. And then, of course, he got aggressive and angry, as everybody with rabies in the late stage does. And this is because rabies isn't like the rest of these things we've talked about, right? Whereas Toxo is this nice, clever hacker, and cordyceps are being more like a side channel attack going in there and getting around the, the central nervous system. Rabies is a script kitty with a root kit, right? It's just in there to break things. <laughs> And so, exactly, right? It's like, ah, da, da. Um, so it's just making the same connections left and right, messing up your limbic system. As part of this, fun fact, so though the Duke's um, guards didn't test this, it's been attested in many other places, um, in the last stages of rabies, it can cause a man to have an orgasm every hour. Um, Galen, uh, the famous Roman physician, says that once a man lasted three days like this, and that's where I probably should say I'm not that kind of doctor, but do not get rabies. Get Toxo, not rabies. Okay. 
Also, I mentioned earlier this disease takes for your humanities and it comes from wearable, or it comes from dogs and it comes from bats. Um, so there was this brilliant paper that came out actually in 1998 in neurology, which is normally a really fancy journal that uh, had a very good argument for how ancient ideas of both werewolves and vampires actually come from rabies because you get a bite and you turn into the creature and you become animalistic and use all reason. So finally, I'd like to end by talking about, I think, the most terrifying part of all of this. Now that I've talked to you about the monsters, let me tell you about, about how we can create the monsters. So there is a recent work that showed that you could take a memory of fear and optogenetically, so you can shine lights into a brain and you can transfer a memory of fear into a brain. So you can make a mouse fear something that it had never seen before because you have the memory of fear recorded and you can directly implant it in. Science. science. Brilliant science. And so with that, I'd like to raise a toast to our brains who managed to outcompete all these crazy monsters and keep us alive to this day.